uh, hey, let's talk about genetically modified house pets. If you don't know what genetic modification is, then look it up. Maybe watch a video about it after this one. First, let's talk about the history of genetically modified mammals. We've technically been modifying life for around 15,000 years, but it was in the form of selected breeding. In case you don't know, it's when you take a female and a male with certain traits and bish bash bosh you get a baby. The problem is, is that you have to play the genetic lottery and only have a chance at getting what you want. That's lame. Let's go to the year 1974 and meet a man named Rudolf Janisch. Janisch was the dude who genetically modified the first mouse. He did this by injecting external DNA into the mouse's embryo. Jump ahead a few years, the mouse has been around the town, which means the first child of this genetically modified rodent was born. The amazing part is, is that the baby actually inherited this modified gene. And that would set the premises of all gene editing that was to come. Let's talk about commercialized edits. The first genetically modified pet that you could buy was, you guessed it, a fish. Project Glowfish was released to the US market in 2003. They were modified to be glow sticks and could glow a fluorescent red when shown under UV light. This is actually similar to the first cosmetic edit done to a dog in 2009. The name the scientist gave to the dog was Rupee, and him and four of his Halloween glow stick roommates can actually glow the same way the fish did. It makes me think about Clifford the Big Red Dog. He isn't really red and the size of a house because his owners loved him, but it's actually a gross genetic experiment that went horribly wrong. Now let's talk about how we'll make our little canine friend speak. Oh, by the way, I figured that I would make the steps about dogs and no other animal because I didn't want the video to be too long. But these principles would apply to most mammals. Now, if you want to talk with a dog, you have to make it smarter. Some may say that golden retrievers are smarter than toddlers, but there is a reason why you don't talk to toddlers. Because there's only so much I can talk to them about. So, we boost the dog's IQ, and now he has the potential to have a conversation with you. Assuming that the IQ boost does nothing for his word comprehension skills, we would have to give the dog the ability to tell the difference between certain sounds. What do I mean by that? Well, dogs can understand words like sit and stay. Studies even show they can understand the words themselves and not just the body language. But the scientists weren't done yet. They had the dogs listen to the words sit and then the words soot or something similar, I'm not sure. But they processed the word as if it were the same, which is a big problem because sit and sat are like this or rice and race. And both of those words mean totally different things. So we would need to make sure that our musty mongrels knew the difference between certain sounds. To talk, your face uses hundreds of muscles to move your mouth. If a dog wanted to speak English, then it would need to have those same muscles. Take a look at this diagram. There are a lot of muscles around your lips and cheeks. Those muscles allow us to pronounce words. Try saying the word pacifier. Alright, try again, but say it slower. 1. You sound really stupid. And 2. Notice how your mouth moves when you say pa or fa or sa. Now, take a look at the dog's mouth muscles. You can't really say much if you don't have those muscles near your mouth. So, we would need to give our canine friend the same muscular structure if we wanted him to speak the English language. So, now we have a speaking dog. But what if we wanted it to drive a car? Sure, it breaks all laws of nature, but if you cared about such laws of nature, you would have left within the first 15 seconds of the video. Well, okay, if mom's swinging cigarettes at the local gas station, and dad left for milk approximately five years ago, then Fido might have to take one for the team and drive little Timmy home from school. But Fido has no opposable thumbs. How could he drive? First, we need to know what opposable thumbs are. Touch your thumb to your pinky finger. Cool, you can grab stuff. Notice how dogs can't do that. You would need to make all of their paw fingers longer and put certain muscles in between all of the fingers so they can, you know, move them. If you wanted to have the dog be able to grab stuff while standing, then that's pretty easy. You could just have the dog be trained to stand on three legs and give him stronger balance. Now, making these weird dog human people would create a few problems. First thing to note, there would be a massive obesity problem for obvious reasons. And traffic would be even worse because now you have people and dogs using and owning motor vehicles. I would guess that these dogs would be a more novelty thing rather than a human productivity boosting endeavor. But they'd be pretty cool pets. Anyways, like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you want more, and uh, bye.